Welcome to the Tobacco Online Policy Seminar. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mike Pesco, a tobacco control, control researcher at Georgia State University. TOPS is being organized by myself, Catherine McLean from Temple University, C. Sheng from the Ohio State University, and Justin White from University of California, San Francisco. The seminar will be one hour with questions asked by the moderator and discussant. The audience may pose questions and comments in the Q&A panel, and the moderator will drop from these questions and comments in conversation with the presenter. Please review the guidelines on tobaccopolicy.org for acceptable comments. Please keep the comments professional and related to the research being discussed. Comments meeting seminar series guidelines will be shared with the presenter afterwards, even if they are not read aloud. Your comments are very much appreciated. The presentation is being video recorded and will be made available on the TOPS website, tobaccopolicy.org. I will turn the presentation over to today's moderator, Justin White from University of California, San Francisco to introduce our speaker. Today, Ernest Derilas will lead a traditional single paper presentation entitled Tobacco Surcharges Reduce Marketplace Enrollment Rates, Especially in Rural Counties. Ernest is a job market candidate and a second century initiative university doctoral fellow at Georgia State University. His research utilizes quasi-experimental econometric methods to study health, public, and labor economics issues with a particular interest in tobacco policy. Stephen Hill from ARC is a co-author of the paper and will assist in answering select questions in the Q&A. Our discussant today is C. Shang. Ernest Derillis will be presenting his research in two segments. We'll, ha we'll have a pause after each segment to allow for questions. Ernest, thank you for presenting for us today. Thank you, Justin. My name is Ernest. Um, my quarters are Stephen C. Hill from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality and Mike Pisco from Georgia State University. So the, the title of this paper is Tobacco So Charges Reduce Marketplace Enrollment Rates, Especially in Rural Counties. Now let's dive into the presentation. Sorry. There is a disclosure, sorry. Uh, I don't know why it's okay. There is a disclosure first. This research was supported by a research color grant insurance from the American Cancer Society. The views that we express in this paper are the authors and they do not reflect the views of the American Cancer Society, the, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, or the US Department of Health and Human Services. And I, I, I have no current or historical tobacco related conflict to report. Let's go into the presentation. So let's first go by a one minute overview. Tobacco use is a public health concern. We, we all know that. And tobacco to reduce tobacco consumption, the Affordable Care Act or the ACA permits insurers to charge tobacco users up to 50% more than non-tobacco users. So in the context of this paper, we ask the following questions. First, what is, what is the effect of this policy on insurance enrollment? And what is the effect of this policy on cancellation of plan selection? So it's when a consumer uh, uh, select a plan, is the consumer more likely to cancel this plan as a result of, of this policy? Now, the, the theory that uh, underlines our research is the law of demand, you know, higher in the sense that higher premiums are, are associated with lower quantity demanded of insurance. And the empirical model that we follow is a two-way fixed effect model where the fixed effects are coming from counties and, and time fixed effect. The data are administrative data administrative data on the size of tobacco surcharges and enrollment in different plant level from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the CMS. The results are the following. First, we found that tobacco surcharges reduced total enrollment and smoker share of enrollment. We also found that effects are bigger in rural areas. And finally, we found that tobacco surcharges have no significant effect on the rate of cancellation of plan selection. And we believe that those findings are, are important. Now, these, these, are, these are the results. And uh, let me show you guys why you should believe our results. First, uh, every day, 1,300 people die from the long-term effect of cigarette smoking in the US. And smoking costs the US more than $300 billion 
a year, including $170 billion in, in uh, direct medical costs for adult smokers. And over 34 million smoker, adult smoke in 2019. And uh, a, a person's tobacco use nowadays can play uh, a role in how much she pays, he or she pays for health insurance coverage. And uh, the Affordable Care Act, the AC or Obamacare, if you will, brought dramatic uh, changes to the way insurance premium are determined in the US. Insurance companies can no longer base premium on an applicant's medical history. They cannot reject an applicant based on their pre-existing condition. But the AC allow, allows individual health insurers to adjust premium based on four factors, the geographic location, the age, family size and tobacco use. Talking about tobacco use, the ACA permits insurers to charge tobacco users up to 50% more than non-tobacco users. And the ACA does that for at least two reasons. The first reason is that is to finance additional health care that smokers may have. And the second reason is to financially incentivize smoking cessation. Now, states are able to limit this surcharge or prohibit them together. As a matter of fact, there are seven states that prohibit this surcharge, uh, these surcharges in the individual market. States like California, Massachusetts, New Jersey, etc. And, and one thing that is important to consider is that there are premium subsidies or premium tax credits, in general, they are used by the majority of individual market enrollees. But those, but subsidies are not designed to cover the tobacco surcharge. And, and, and there are, as you guys may, may think already, there are several concerns associated with this policy. And the first concern that this policy raised is that tobacco surcharges may lead individuals to misrepresent themselves, to misrepresent their tobacco use when they enroll in non group insurance. I'm going to be talking a lot about non-group insurance. So whenever I mention non-group insurance, I mean a marketplace for individuals who do not have insurance uh, uh, through, uh, through public uh, insurance program and who do not have insurance through their employers. So people who enroll uh, and, and uh, non-group market are generally like consultant, uh, business people like people who have like sole proprietorship, etc. Now I give I provide for you here an example of healthcare.gov where I went there, me, Ernest Douglas, I went there to make an application. So you see the, the, the for the year 2021 and the state of Georgia, I didn't finish the application, but that's where you can go to make an application. Anyone can go there to make an application if you do not have insurance through your employer or through a public program. Now, one thing that is important to consider is that, that when selection, when selecting a non-group plan, consumers are instructed to report whether each adult applying for coverage has used tobacco on average four or more times per week over the past six months. So if it is the case, this is going, they are going to classify this person as a tobacco user. And uh, the, the person may misrepresent himself, say that I do not use tobacco while the person may may use tobacco. So that's, that's the first concern. And if an insurance company later discovers that the non-smoker is in fact a smoker, the individual may have to retroactively pay the surcharges. And enrollment can be canceled if retroactive surcharges are not paid. I know some people may be saying, okay, what's the matter? I can just pay the retroactive surcharge. But imagine the situation of somebody who has lung cancer and this person has exhausted all this money uh, uh, from cancer treatment. Now, what may happen is that when the insurance has to step up to, 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 to cover for the person, the insurance may strategically see I, did, did this person lie when the person says that I am not a tobacco user? If the, the, the insurance discovers that the person lied and that the person is a smoker, the, per, the insurance can 
ask the person to pay for the retroactive surcharges. In that situation, if the person has already exhausted all his income, now the person may not be able to pay and the insurance can cancel uh, the, 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 retro, the, the, the plan. So that's why we believe it's an important issue. Another concern is that tobacco surcharge may make insurance unaffordable for many tobacco users. So in that sense, the surcharges may reduce enrollment for tobacco users. Now, uh, this is the case for tobacco users. So we see there is a reduction for, there may be a reduction for tobacco users, but we do not know for non-tobacco users. So for non-tobacco users, tobacco users, the impact, we do not know where it's going because the premium do not include the additional cost of care for uh, 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 that, that it includes for tobacco users. So the net effect of surcharges is likely ambiguous in the sense that we know what is going to happen for tobacco users. There is a negative relationship, but we do not know for non-tobacco users. So uh, although we expect that the effect is going to benefit non-smokers at the expense of smokers. So to reiterate for you the questions before we go into the literature, we see these two questions. First is what is the effect of the surcharges on insurance enrollment? And what is the effect of surcharge rate sizes on the rate of plan cancellation? Now let's go into the uh, literature. If you guys have questions, you can always uh, uh, ask the question in the Q&A and Steve is going to help us answer those questions. Now, uh, a paper by Kaplan and Kaplan, Kaplan et al. in 2014, found that most of the plan offered through the health insurance exchanges had lower tobacco surcharge than allowed by legislation. So you may think that because it is allowed 50%, all states have 50%. No, it is not the case. And another paper by Friedman et al. in 2016 did like divide the surcharge into low surcharges, medium surcharges, and high surcharges. For low surcharges, they use surcharges that are less than 10%, medium surcharges, surcharges that are between 10 and 30%, and state with high surcharges are states that have surcharges be above 30%. So below 10, 10 and 30, and above uh, 30. So they found that in states that have medium and high tobacco surcharges, tobacco surcharges are associated with a substantial reduction in insurance coverage, but no significant effect on smoking cessation. But they found no, no uh, uh, significant effect and a low surcharge state. Another paper by Pesco et al. in 2017 found no evidence of association between surcharges and lower enrollment rate among self-reported smokers or in rates of smoking. Kaplan and Kaplan built on Pesco and, and Friedman to investigate the same relationship in 2020, and they found also significant reduction in enrollment for smokers. Now, how does our paper differ from this literature? So uh, the contribution of our paper is that we first estimate the heterogeneity and the effect of surcharges by gender, age, and rural and urban status. So in that sense, we provide insight into the effect of surcharge policies on health insurance disparities. And the second contribution of this paper is that we measure non-enrollment, uh, we measure enrollment and non-group plan through marketplace using administrative data. In contrast to most previous studies that have used survey data, which we all know may suffer from misreported types of insurance. Now, the third contribution of this paper is that we use more precise county level measures of surcharges, whereas previous studies have used a state level surcharges. And the fourth contribution of this paper, to our knowledge, we are the first to study the effect of surcharges on insurance disenrollment. You know, when we talk about disenrollment, we mean consumers canceling their enrollment and plan selection. And the fifth contribution of this paper is that unlike most papers in this literature, we study the surcharges of both bronze and silver plants. These are the contribution of this paper. Now, I don't know if you guys have any question. Yeah, uh, thanks, Ernest. Let, let me see if uh, our discussant, Si Shang, has any questions to start off. 
uh, thanks, Ernest. I think I only have a few uh, clarification questions. So I know that uh, in the current literature, uh, they consider there may be underreporting of tobacco use status. Um, so in terms of this um, studies in, in the line of research on the association between surcharges uh, and cessation and other outcomes. So can you, can you please give us some information if there is any on the extent of underreporting? of tobacco use status? Uh, if there is any uh, uh, misreporting, I yeah, mean- Yeah, magnitude, like, you know, to what extent this may, you know, uh, pose limitations in the existing studies. Yes, I don't know if uh, uh, Steve, uh, which may answer, Steve has anything to say about that. Yeah, I, I don't think any studies have directly measured the extent of underreporting. Um, I think um, uh, there's been comparisons about reporting of tobacco use in surveys where people report they're in health um, in the non-group market, and then comparing that to um, the administrative data on tobacco use. And um, I think it's been asserted that there's a fairly large difference um but i i can't recall any numbers offhand and um uh the the one issue with that is that uh, so there there are two measurement error issues one is in the 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 administrative data and the other is in the survey data um and the bigger issue there is that people aren't very people have more difficulty reporting um accurately at the, that they're in um, non-group coverage than they have with reporting whether they have any insurance or specific other types of insurance because it's fairly rare. And then um, it, because you can sign up for it in the same similar way that you sign up for Medicaid, people get confused about what kind of coverage they have. And also there are all these Medicaid um, not plans that are private plans contracting with Medicaid. So, um, those kinds of comparisons aren't um, a gold standard, but they are suggestive. Mm -hmm, thank you. Uh, and also you mentioned that uh, the advantage of this study is uh, that you have county level administrative data. Uh, can you please elaborate, you know, whether the uh, premiums uh, change by county level and whether the state level, so you have a better measurement of it or you know what's the what's the exact benefit of looking at county level data instead of state level data i think we have more more in the sense we're going to have more variations and um and the county level it's more precise it's it gives us more more room to have more variation in that sense okay yeah so um all right. Um, so, can we go to the Q and A? I think those well, are. Yeah, sure. Thanks, C. Um, so, there's one question in the chat, and uh, I actually have um, one or two others I might add. Um, from Elizabeth De Luca Contrao is asking: Are people who vape considered smokers? Yes, they are considered. And the definition of smokers here: any any type of any any type of product. Yes. Great. And one question I had is whether you, you mentioned one of the rationales for the surcharges is to offset the potentially higher medical costs for smokers versus non-smokers and for sort of benchmarking the size of the surcharges. Does, do you happen to know either in your sample or more generally what that cost difference would be? Uh, between smokers and non-smokers? Yeah, in terms of their, their medical costs, just uh, No, I, we do not have the specific data, but in the descriptive statistic, I have like um, for bronze, uh, we have like for bronze and silver, the difference, but we do not know specifically between smoker and non-smoker. Although we know the surcharge is like 14%. The surcharge is, uh, the, the mean surcharge is 14%. So smokers pay 14% more than non-smokers. But as far as in dollar value, we do not know specifically what it is. OK, great. Um, actually, wh wh why don't we keep going then, um, Ernest? Thanks. 
So as far as um, data for the enrollment data, we use the states that used healthcare that gov eligibility and enrollment platform over the years 2014 to 2019. So we use administrative data. So the data contains the number of unique consumers who selected a qualified health plan. So uh, this data, this is where we get our outcome variables. So the first outcome variable is total enrollment. So the total enrollment that we use is the total number of enrollees and all meta levels divided by the county population, the, the, the non-elderly county population. And the second uh, um, outcome variable is the smoker and smoker enrollment share, which is the share of total enrollees and all meta levels who reported any tobacco use. And the third outcome variable is the disenrollment, disenrollment rate, which is the fraction of the population, the population below 65, that can sell a plane and a state in a year. So this data is also uh, disaggregated. We have different subpopulation into this data as well. So we have the male population and the, and the enrollment data, female enrollment, age, and different age groups. As far as surcharge data, we use the, the, this data is coming from the Center for Consumer Information and Insurance Oversight, again, from the CMS. So this data is compiled, compiled plan and insurer level, sorry. So this data compiled plan and insurer level for all the state of our study period. So the first thing that we do, we construct a county age level data set for bronze and silver plan that operate in the market between 2014 and 27 to, to 2019 for the ages 19 to 64. And for each county uh, uh, middle level, we find first the plan with the lowest premium, lowest cost plan for adults who do not use tobacco, the non-tobacco users. We also find the, the lowest plan, the plan with the lowest premium for tobacco users. And then we calculate the minimum effective tobacco surcharge. So this tobacco surcharge is the ratio of the premium of the lowest cost plan for tobacco users divided by the premium of the lowest cost plan for non-tobacco users minus one. So it's equivalent to how much more the premium for the lowest cost plan is for smokers as a percentage of the premium for non-smokers. So uh, the, uh, the, what we do after that we, we take the average or we collapse the data so we can merge it with the enrollment data and investigate the effect of interest. Since in the paper, we do like urban and rural analysis for, for this analysis, we use the 2013 rural urban continuum code classification scheme to divide counties into urban and rural counties. So after we merge, uh, the size of our data is 14,097 county years pairs, which is an average of 2,349 counties per year. So this, this uh, county sample in the sense is representative in the sense that it's about 75% of all counties in the US and it counts for about like 240 million, 48 million individuals. Now let's look at the descriptive data. First, what do we do? We take the burn surcharge, we, we take the median of the burn surcharge and we see below counties that are below the median and counties that are above the median. And we see what are the descriptive statistics there and we see if there is any difference. So we did also the same thing for the silver surcharge and we found more or less the same results. So we decided to present the burn surcharge. So as you can see, and this is the below the, the, the median, above the median, and this is the difference. For total enrollment, we see we have more people actually enrolled in counties the, below the median of the burn surcharge. We see the enrollment is bigger here, 3,800, three, 3,400. And we see also, and this makes sense to, to see more people in lower surcharge uh, areas. We also see total enrollment rate is higher and, and below the and places that are below the median. We see there are more smokers, smoker share is higher also there and below the median. And we also, if you see, you will see that bronze premium is higher there, 385, 375, silver premium is higher there as well. And I think one of, and we think one of the reason why we may see that bronze and silver premiums are higher and places below the, the, the median 
of the church, burn the church, is because there are more smokers in wool in those places. And we know because of the tobacco so churches, uh, the, the premium of smokers are likely to be higher. And uh, although we do not show you guys all the all the order variables that we we see the difference for, but when we and when we see the table for all the other variables that we include in our regression, we realize that there are lower surcharges were also associated with counties having more, more policies to reduce tobacco and alcohol use. So we control for all these differences in, in the regression analysis. Now, we also show this, um, this, this evolution where you can see the bronze and black and silver and red between 2004 and uh, 2014 and 2019. So we see the evolution of the surcharges and percentage. As you guys can see, the, the bronze surcharge and the silver surcharge more or less follows the same pattern. Uh, before, uh, like here, like in 2015 going into 2016, we see that the bronze surcharge was higher. And after that, we see that the silver surcharge it becomes higher and go down as it, but they, they follow more or less the same pattern. Now, as far as the empirical specification, this is what we use, where we estimate the effect of the surcharge rate sizes on our outcome variables. So our outcome variables, again, are total enrollment rate, smoker enrollment share, and disenrollment rate. As far as the surcharges, this is the minimum effective ratio for silver and bronze. So we estimate those models separately because they are likely also to be correlated. And now as far as control variables, we use a battery of control, control variables such as bronze plan, silver plan, uh, CPI adjusted cigarette tax, CPI adjusted for, in, adjusted for inflation, e-cigarette tax adjusted for inflation, bill tax adjusted, uh, marijuana laws, uh, minimum wage. We also control for Medicaid expansion states uh, unemployment level, poverty level, et cetera. We control for these variables because they may affect uh, insurance enrollment. So they may bias our result if we do not control for them. We also include county fixed effect in the analysis to remove confounding from time invariant differences across county that pertain to insurance enrollment. We also include time fixed effect to remove confounding from changes affecting our outcome variable over time. And this, uh, uh, the, the, the epsilon CT is the disturbance term. Now for the disenrollment analysis, as you can see, for the total enrollment and smoker enrollment, this analysis is at the county, is a county year level analysis. But for the disenrollment analysis, it's a state year level analysis because this data is aggregated at the state level because we did not have this data at, at the county level. Now, there are three limitations to this paper. The first limitation to the paper is that we use the state that used healthcare.gov eligibility and enrollment platform. So state-based exchanges are excluded. As a matter of fact, as of November 2020, there are 15 state-based exchanges. And um, so we do not use state-based exchanges in the analysis. Now. We also, the second limitation to the paper is that we esti the, our estimates of smoker and woman share are based on tobacco use reported by the enrollees. As we said, one concern of this policy is that enrollees, they may, they may misreport their smoking status to avoid the surcharge. But so we do not capture the effect of actual tobacco users, rather we capture the effect on admitted tobacco users people who say that they are tobacco users. Now, the third limitation to this study is that while we have tobacco surcharges for bronze and silver plane, but our enrollment measures combine all middle level. So we do not have enrollment level for bronze per se or for silver per se, but we have enrollment level for all the metal levels. You know, there are different metal levels. We have catastrophic, we have bronze, we have silver, we have uh, uh, platinum, we have gold, et cetera. Now, uh, um, we have another set of questions in case you guys have questions before we go into the results section. Thanks, Ernest. I'll turn it again over to C to see if she has yeah. questions. Ernest, can you go back to slide 14? I think there is a very interesting graph showing the uh, trend of surcharge. 
uh, yes, uh, can you please uh, explain a little bit more why it was uh, the surcharge was higher back in 2014 and it dropped then went up again? So do you know what factors drove this trend? Yes, I, I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if Steve or Mike has, has some insight about this. I, I think there was some initial confusion in 2014 about um, uh, the combined effects of, of age and tobacco surcharges. And so there was, um, um, 2014 was sort of an interestingly unique first year. Um, but, um, and so um, things got sort of evened out after that. And, and uh, most, um, well, what's most of the change is being driven by issuers entering um, the marketplace, um, deciding to participate in, and uh, the issuers differ in their surcharge rates and in the service areas they're covering. Um, and uh, as those change over time, um, that's what's driving um, the surcharges. So for example, by 2019, uh, there was um, some uh, is issuers were dropping out of the marketplace. Um, and so the ones that were left may have been the ones that had uh, higher surcharges, surcharge rates, but we didn't um, dive into the specific um, factors, but in general, I'd say that's what's going on. Thank you. So if I understand correctly, you guys also look into the division of uh, rural versus urban. So say if you plot this trends for by rural and urban, would you expect to see any differences? Because you also present uh, descriptive evidence, uh, but I don't see this uh, comparison between rural and urban in terms of the uh, summary statistics. So if it's in your paper, would you mind describe a little bit on the differences by um, rural urban division? Because I think that's one advantage of your restricted data to allow you to explore this heterogeneity in the data. Thanks. Yes, th thank you. Thank you for that. We will uh, do another graph like that where we see for rural and urban. I do think there is going to be a level in terms of they may follow the same pattern, but we are going to see a level where for rural the surcharges are going to be higher and and for urban, they are going to be lower. But thank you. Yeah. So if there is no other question, you're going. Oh. Ernest, I think I'll elaborate a little bit on that. And that is that the, the rural premiums, uh, so there are two factors that are kind of underlying the overall premium and that is um, the costs in the areas. Uh, and the other is um, competition. So rural areas have not had much uh, or have a lot less competition between insurance companies uh, in the marketplace and they've had higher premiums overall. And so um, even, even with the same, even if they have the same surcharge rate in an urban and a rural area, because the level of the um, premium is higher, the, the, the surcharge is gonna have a, a bigger bite in the rural area because it's, this, you know, if it's 14% of $1,000 and it's 14% uh, of $500, the 14% of $1,000 in a rural area is going to be a much bigger impact. Yeah. See, do you have any further questions? I don't have any further questions. Okay, Ernest, there, there's one more in the chat. Um, so Alex Lieber is asking about uh, how in your empirical model you adjust for um, income, um, individual income, because uh, people who have uh, uh, lower income, the surcharge is going to be larger in proportional terms. And so whether you've thought about that or, or uh, account for that at all in, in your model. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, we, it's not an individual level data, but we do account for county, county's information, such as unemployment level and poverty level. So I think these control for more or less for people that are like living in counties where they have more income and less income. And also um, we, we also have like some like 
county fix effect, which may uh, uh, remove some of that as well if we do not capture for it. Yes, but we do not have like individual level data where we can specifically see for individual income. Yeah. Okay, great. I, I think you can continue. I think that's all, all the questions that yes. we have at this Thank point. you. Okay, so as far as result, how this is how we, we shall interpret our results. So we present these results in terms of the impact of a one percentage point increase and the surcharge on, on the outcome variables. So we also compute the elasticity of the outcome variables with respect to silver and burn surcharge at the mean of the order independent variable. So let's see our main results. So this is the effect of tobacco uh, of uh, surcharges on burns and silver play. So the first two column are the results for enrollment rate. Here we have surcharge, we estimate them separately. We have silver surcharge. So this is the impact of silver surcharge on enrollment rate. This is the impact of burn surcharge on enrollment rate in this column. And after that, we have for smoker share and the same way for disenrollment rate in the same way. We have here of the total observation, 14,000. And we have the R square, the mean dependent variable. We have the elasticity. We have all our controls, year fixed effect, county fixed effect. And for the disenrollment, we have state fixed effect because this data is at the state level. Now, what do we do? A one percentage spread increase in silver surcharge is predicted to, to decrease enrollment rate by 0.0257 percentage points. And this result is statistically significant. Now for bronze, a one percentage point increase in the bronze surcharge is predicted to decrease enrollment rate by 0.034 percentage points. And this result again is statistically significant. When we see for smoker share, for the effect of silver surcharge on smoker share, we also see that the effect is statistically significant and the effect is quite big. It's 0 0.058084. And when we see the effect of burn surcharge, we see on smoker share, we see again that the effect is negative and statistically significant, 0 0.05.28 percentage points. And now when we see for disenrollment rate, we do not see any statistical significance, although we see that the signs are, are positive. Now, as we can see also, we, we did for we did elasticity of enrollment rate with respect to born surcharge and with respect to silver surcharge. The elasticity here, when we come to at the mean of the order independent variable, it's negative, but it's less than one. In that sense, it's inelastic. Now we see the elasticity is negative and statistically significant here for, en for enrollment, for the effect of silver surcharge on enrollment. The elasticity again is negative here and statistically significant. And we see also negative here and negative, but they are inelastic. It's less than one, it's inelastic. Now, what is the summary of our results? So the results show that tobacco surcharges reduce tobacco enrollment rate and smoker share enrollment rate significantly. The result, the elasticity suggests that the effects are inelastic for both self-reported smokers and non-smokers. And the estimate also suggests that tobacco surcharge policy does not incentivize people who have already made plan selection to cancel those plans. And we believe that this result is, is an important result. Now, we also do some heterogeneity analysis where we, we use different subsamples that we had in the in enrollment data. This is the, the model for bronze by categories, and the categories are male, female, age 1834, age 35, 54, 55 and above, rural and urban. This is the en total enrollment rate model. We see the results are consistent in the sense that they are all negative. And most, most of them are statistically significant, except for rural and urban here, and more or less age, age 35 and 54. But what, what is important is that we do not see like meaningful difference between male and female here. As you can see, the, 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 the coefficients are more or less the same. And also we do not see uh, is a meaningful difference as well in terms of age. The, the effects are not so different in terms of age as well. But for wo for rural here for total enrollment, we see for urban the effects are statistically insignificant. But when we look here for for uh, for smoker share, 
when we look here for smokers share, don't forget the black is bronze, the red is silver. For the same categories, we see again, the results are consistent. They are negative and all of them are statistically significant. But we see something here. When we look at for wool, smoker share, again, for wool, we see the effect is minus 0 0.079 for silver, while for urban, for silver plane, is just 0 0.028. When we see again for wool, for bronze plane, the effect is minus 0 0.76 for wool, but for urban is just 0 0.028. So we see that the effects are way bigger in wool area than they are in urban area. So uh, for the heterogeneity analysis, the conclusion is that tobacco surcharge rates have significantly larger impacts in wool areas than urban areas for smoker share in wool men. A one percentage print increase in bronze tobacco surcharge is associated with a decrease in, in wool men rate by 0.076 percentage prints for wool residents compared to 0.02 percentage print re reduction for urban residents. We see that the effects are not so different by sex and by age. Now we do different robustness check to see whether our results are, are solid and robust. The conclusion did not change when we only keep the 34 states that participate in healthcare that go every year over our study period. When we, we also did another specification check. So this specification check is that, you know, like due to privacy issue, issues, the CMS does not report data for counties with fewer than 10 enrollees. Now, if a county has fewer than 10 enrollees, the CMS does not report this data. So in our main specification, what we did, we impute enrollment as the mean of the interval 0, 9. Because if a county has less than 10 enrollees, so it's like the county has either 0 or 9, in between 0 and 9 in this interval. So what we did for the main specification, we imputed the mean of this interval, which is 4.5 for all those counties. And we did the analysis, we found those results. Now, what we do in this specification check, we remove all those counties and we found that the conclusion did not change, the results are still robust to them. And again, finally, we did like a dynamic analysis where we have like a contemporaneous effect and the past value of the surcharge. So the contemporaneous effect remains more or less the same with the main effect, main specification effect, and the past value of the surcharge is small in magnitude. So, and that's what we did in terms of robustness check and everything was robust. Now, as far as the, the discussion, so the tobacco surcharges reduce health insurance enrollment on healthcare that go up over world and shift the composition of enrollment away from self-reported tobacco users. And we found decline in enrollment among tobacco users more than offset any higher enrollment among non-tobacco users. So the lower share enrollment of self-reported as tobacco users rises is consistent with either two things. It's either we have less enrollment or we have more concealment of tobacco use. So the result that we found is either two things. It's either an overall there are less enrollment or more concealment of tobacco users. But when we look at the combined effect of lower tobacco, uh, total enrollment and lower share of self-reported tobacco users, we believe that the changes in concealment are much less than the changes in total enrollment. So what I'm basically saying is that the results that we are finding is saying that there are less enrollment is not, and not necessarily more concealment of tobacco use. The, another finding was that no evidence that we found that there is no evidence that individuals who make plan selection can sell those plans differentially as a result of the tobacco surcharge. And uh, the, the, another finding was the important finding was that the surcharge dif disproportionately reduced smoker share of enrollment in rural areas. And we believe there are several reasons for that. The first reason is that rural residents, they are more likely to be tobacco users than urban residents. And not only that, uh, rural residents generally have lower income 
and they are more budget sensitive than urban residents. So we believe that the fact when we combine these two facts, they smoke, they smoke more and they are more budget sensitive and in general they are poorer. This kind of explains this result that the, re the results are bigger for smoker share in Wilmy and rural areas. And um, we believe that these effects are for rural areas are concerning in the sense that rural, relative to urban residents, rural residents have much worse outcome for cancer diagnosis than urban residents. Rural residents have higher rates of lung cancer incidence and mortality. They, are, um, they have lower gain in, in life expectancy than non-metropolitan. And they also have like more on stage a cancer than urban residents. So we believe that tobacco surcharges may disproportionately impact health equity in that sense. Now, there are there are several implications of this study, like seven states prohibit this surcharge in the individual market. This finding suggests that the prohibition is likely to decrease premium for tobacco users and likely raise prices somewhat for order for orders. And the federal tax credit are based on the silver plan with the lowest cost plan for non-tobacco users. In that sense, we believe that prohibiting tobacco surcharges will likely increase tax credit as the second, the second lowest cost premium rises. And the premium tax credit will also rise more in rural areas because premium are likely to increase more in rural areas. So prohibiting tobacco surcharges will likely funnel more tax credits to rural areas. So thank you. Thank you guys for, for your attention. Thanks so much, Ernest. Uh, C, do you have any comments? Uh, great presentation. Um, I think I have um, just a few comments on the uh, methodology and maybe um, uh, 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 some questions regarding how you would look at uh, the results. Um, so first of all, I think you know the outcome variables that you use, uh, for example, the, um, the shares, Mm -hmm. And um, also the uh, other outcome that's actually a fraction, a fractional number between zero and one. So I know you use a linear um, regression, but I think a sensitivity check would be to try maybe fractional logic for those outcome variables that are uh, between zero and one. So that's a, a type of GLL model that specifically is designed to deal with this type of uh, outcomes. Um, but I think that's uh, that's a secondary, I guess, um, a se uh, sensitivity check. Um, I guess you know I'm I'm quite interested in um, the discussion in relation to the um, enrollment of non-tobacco users. So I'm just wondering if you can use your administrative data to look at how surcharges may uh, impact the enrollment of uh, non-tobacco users, because I'm wondering if that could lead to, you know, what the, the overall impact would be on the uh, disparities um, of insurance um, and also tobacco users. So I think to have that piece of puzzle here uh, that would give us a more complete story. So I don't know if you guys are interested in exploring that um, because you know you mentioned this in both the, the uh, motivations and also in discussion. So you think that it could the search charges could impact not just the tobacco users but also non tobacco users. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah. See anything else? Um, yeah, I guess those are my, my general comments. And I also feel that uh, I think, you know, what you find here means a lot of, to the rural and uh, urban disparities in tobacco use. Uh, so I guess, can you, can you comment on, you know, whether the enrollment means anything in terms of tobacco cessation treatments? Because I'm under the impression that uh, even if they pay higher premium, but some insurance plan does pay for the cessation treatment. Um, so I don't know what the general outcome would be, say if they are not paying premium and become insured and uninsured, and if they are seeking for you know tobacco cessation treatment and they have to pay for it. So you know if the uh, consumer here knows this, 
and that could change their decision making. So can you comment a bit on the um, coverage of cessation treatment, of the insurance plans? I don't know if Mike, or, uh, since I know Mike has a paper on that or Steve want to talk about that more. Uh, yeah, you know, I remember we <laughs> we looked at uh, what the what the requirements are, and since it's a it's an A and B uh, preventive service, um, you know, tobacco cessation has to be covered so um, by these plans. Um, so yes, getting coverage is is key to getting um, access to free um, uh, tobacco services, tobacco cessation services. And products. So can we say that, just expand on that, can we say that those who uh, dropped from enrollment, they may be smokers that are less interested in getting cessation treatment. Uh, so that may be the motivation of why, uh, you know, they dropped from the plan and <laughs> Yeah, so I guess, you know, I'm just curious about the decision making process of uh, smokers and uh, tobacco users in general. Maybe this is a joint decision of not getting session treatment and um, not paying the surcharges. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is the subject for another study, another small study, like to see for tobacco cessation in rural and urban area. Yeah, this could be an, an, an interesting topic. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, just to expand on that, I guess, you know, if there are um, campaigns and also other tobacco policies that can motivate smokers to quit, uh, then, you know, we may see that they're okay with paying the surcharges and uh, getting free cessation treatments. Um, I just feel, you know, there it could may it could imply that we may need several policies together to yes. um, address tobacco use disparities. That's all. Thank you, Mike. Were you going to jump in? Yeah, I was going to try not to, but but C's, C's comments were just so profound. I couldn't I couldn't resist any longer. Um, uh, I guess um, see, I think that there's there's um, you know, another thing that I think about too is like the the people that um, conceal their tobacco use when signing up for health insurance, right? And then they go see the doctor. Now they don't want to talk to their doctor about their tobacco use because they don't want to charge showing up on their insurance, right? That could cause the insurance company to start asking them questions about why didn't you pay, you know, the surcharge. So I think, you know, there's a barrier there. And then I think, you know, the surcharge is then, yeah, in terms of just reducing kind of enrollment overall, that does seem to be then a barrier to kind of accessing um, these services. Um, I, I am interested uh, kind of in, you know, I know that some states, they do just have like quit line numbers, right, where people can get free services. I think sometimes those are tied into state Medicaid programs, right? Uh, but other times, I don't know if, I think you might be able to get NRT you know, without saying anything about your insurance, right? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure about about that, but I wonder, um, you know, I guess conceivably the the, the costs of um, kind of lower disenrollment due to the surcharges would be less in states that are just providing free NRT anyways, right? Um, but anyways, those are just some ideas that that uh, jump to mind based on your, your comments. See anything else? Uh, those are great answers. I think, you know, there is a, a lot to be done here in this line of research. Uh, I don't have any additional comments. Um, let's see okay. if the audience have anything. Um, to I, I had one question about interpretation. So one of the uh, reasons given for perhaps the urban rural difference was around income differences. And if I understood your empirical strategy, you do have county fixed effects that should sort of absorb at least some of the, um, the, the time invariant differences across counties. And I'm wondering if then it could be about something related to like income dispersion that you know maybe there's just more both high and low income 
people uh, away from the, the median, um, so something along those lines. Uh, and, and that might be something that you could potentially explore as well. But uh, I'm curious, if, like, do you, do you feel like uh, you're already accounting for those income differences? And if so, is it so something related to income, but not income itself? Yeah, I think we already account for we already account for them. As you mentioned already, the, the county fixed effect and also this this like um, unemployment level and poverty level. I mean, we can also go ahead and look for other income related uh, measures and try to add, add them to see if the the effect will differ. But I don't think uh, because I've played with this uh, this model and the results are consistent as far as bigger and neg bigger negative impact on rural residents than urban residents. So I think uh, in the sense we've controlled for the income, for the income story, and yet we still see this, this bigger this dispersion, this big dispersion. Yeah, I was just trying to think about the, the reasons why, why there is that urban rural difference in, in um, you know. Yeah, um, as, as, we, as we pointed out here, uh, as we pointed out here, like for the reasons for that, so we said like, first we talk about the fact that they consume tobacco more, you know, relatively more, not, not only on the extensive margin, but also on the intensive margin. You find people more who, 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 who use cigarette daily compared to, to, to urban residents. I think that may also be another mechanism, yeah. Okay, great. Well, I, I'm not seeing anything else in the Q and A. Uh, so maybe if our MC could, Take it away. Yes, um, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Ernest, for the presentation and to the moderator and discussant. Uh, finally, thank you to the, our audience of 80 people for your participation today. Uh, thanks again for participating and have a top snatch weekend. Thank you, bye-bye.